already uh, working at the Venture Institute and working with Novartis to try and make uh, new vaccines very quickly. We think we can shorten the process by 99% uh, for making the flu vaccine each year uh, by using these new synthetic techniques. I think it's going to be one of those situations I tell audiences I talk to that uh, we're entering a new era. We're limited mostly by our imaginations. Could you ever use a method like this with a higher organism, uh, something more complex than bacteria? Well, it's certainly not in the immediate future. Uh, bacteria have much more simplified genetic systems. They don't have the same complex regulation uh, that higher organisms have. But there are a number of single-cell eukaryotes. So we're eukaryotes because we have a nucleus. And I think one of the key things we mastered with our studies, particularly since uh, 2003, uh, and we reported uh, the latest results uh, a few months ago in science at the end of last year, is we can move chromosomes across the branches of life. So we can move from bacteria into eukaryotes. We use yeast for all these processes. We can take the chromosomes out of yeast and move them back into bacteria to create new life forms. So the next step would be try to make a simplified uh, eukaryote. Uh, yeast is uh, very key for biomanufacturing, for ethanol production, etc. cetera. Uh, and if we can have even a more efficient uh, yeast cell, and at the same time try and understand all its components, I think we'll be able to make synthetic eukaryotes. Higher animals, multicellular systems are, I think, projects uh, for the much more distant future. Actually, I have a couple of questions just about how we distinguish between any sort of synthetically um, organisms with synthetic genomes versus the natural ones. Um, one question, I guess, would be about containment. In fact, we worried when we started down this process what could be an artifact that could fool us into thinking we had created synthetic life when, in fact, it was just a contaminant of the native chromosome. And we were worried even a single molecule of native chromosome could fool us into thinking we created a new cell. So uh, early on, we started designing the process of putting watermarks in the genetic code. Uh, we did this in the first chromosome we reported uh, two years ago. Uh, basically, all of us that helped build the genetic code signed the DNA, uh, uh, coded our names into the uh, chromosome. Uh, with this genome, we've gone a little bit further. We've put four major watermarks in. Uh, we've developed a new code for writing uh, English language, other languages with punctuation and numbers into the genetic code. Uh, in the first watermark, we actually have this code that needs to be decoded for people to read the rest. Uh, we even have a website built into the genetic code that uh, if people solve it, uh, they can let us know that they've been able to read it. Uh, all the authors of uh, this study over the, certainly the last decade, her names are all encoded in this first uh, genome. Uh, and we have three quotations uh, uh, built in there of uh, adding a little philosophy to the genetic code at the same time. So I think the chance of finding any of these in a naturally occurring genome is uh, about as close to zero as you can get. So we can absolutely prove from the genetic changes that we've been built into the design of the chromosomes that it's unquestionably the synthetic DNA that we made, not some natural uh, contaminant. On containment, that's a really critical issue, and it's one of the most important issues to us. And one of the number one questions I get asked in all my, lit uh, all my lectures uh, around the globe uh, and when we look at molecular biology for the last several decades, we, we all use E. coli in the laboratory. The genes from multiple species have been put in it over the years, probably tens of millions of experiments. And there's not been a single accident. And the reason for that is that E. coli has a chemical dependency for growing in the laboratory. Uh, so these are things we can start to build into the design of synthetic genomes. We can build in suicide genes so they can't escape. Uh, and so we can use artificial amino acids. There's a number of approaches that we're developing and other labs are developing to guarantee absolute containment. In this first proof of principle, we've largely uh, copied uh, the mycoides uh, genome. 
uh, because as a control, if we couldn't boot up something that was already known, we could never get to the design phase. We deleted uh, 14 uh, genes uh, from this genome and made all these other genetic modifications. Uh, this cell only grows on extremely rich media in the laboratory. Uh, the only other place it goes, uh, the mycoides uh, genome is a minor uh, goat pathogen uh, that causes mastitis in goats. Uh, we think we've eliminated the genes uh, associated with that, uh, but it will not grow outside of the laboratory unless it's deliberately uh, uh, injected or sprayed into, uh, into a goat. So uh, we, we don't work with goats, so uh, we think we have pretty good containment systems in the lab. There are selectable markers. It's dependent on a specific antibiotic. Uh, so these are, these are early attempts. I think uh, these containment approaches will get far more sophisticated uh, with the next versions of what we and others do. All right. Well, are there any final points you'd like to make before we close? Well, this is the first synthetic cell that's been made, and, and we call it synthetic uh, because the cell is totally derived from a synthetic chromosome made from four bottles of chemicals on a chemical synthesizer, starting with information in the computer. Before we did these experiments, starting back in the late 90s, uh, we asked for a complete bioethical review, uh, knowing we were going into uncharted territory trying to create new species. Uh, the review group, review group at the University of Pennsylvania uh, published their results in science in 1999. Since then, there's been lots of different re review uh, processes around the world. The Sloan Foundation funded uh, my institute, the Venture Institute, along with MIT uh, in a Washington think tank to look at uh, the security issues concerning this. Uh, that report was published and can be downloaded from jcvi.org. There's been ongoing discussions in the U.S. government and the EU uh, the National Academy of Sciences has done reports on this, so I think this is the first incidence in science where the extensive uh, bioethical review took place before the experiments were done, and it's part of an ongoing process that we've been driving, uh, trying to make sure that the science proceeds in an ethical fashion, that we're being thoughtful about what we do, uh, and looking forward to the implications to the future.